Hello, this is part two of my Nielsen Pass Amp Camp Amp or ACA uh, amplifier review. Uh, in the first video, I detailed the construction and assembly of this amplifier, and it took about uh, four hours to assemble. And at the end of that video, I did a couple of quick measurements to verify that the amplifier worked. Uh, in this video, we'll be doing a bunch of detailed measurements, basically try to look at the performance of the amplifier and just qualify how it works and see if we can find any problems. Interesting thing of note is that the output polarity um, is reversed. So when you're measure making any measurements, your oscilloscope or analyzer grounds are going to be connected to the positive uh, output. All of these measurements will be done with uh, 8 ohm loads. These are 100 watt non-inductive loads or resistors and um, I will be using uh, primarily my uh, Audio Precision P1 Plus for all of the measurements. The first thing we're going to look at is uh, how much power the amplifier draws. It's a uh, Class A uh, single-ended design, and uh, so it's going to basically draw the same amount of power regardless of whether you have a signal uh, going into the amplifier. Right now, that power is roughly 69 watts. We'll call it uh, 70 watts of power. And I have uh, confirmed that. Uh, some people might think this isn't too accurate, but it actually is pretty darn accurate. Um, I have powered the uh, unit with my uh, linear uh, benchtop power supply over here, and it is um, it roughly measured similar. We will do a couple of measurements to see if we can see any differences uh, between using the provided mean well power supply and a linear power supply over here. My camera struggles to get a good exposure on my audio analyzer. I have it kind of tuned for the audio analyzer which makes uh, my scope readings dark. Um, what I've done right now is I am trying to look at my maximum power or my maximum voltage that uh, the amplifier can uh, you know, provide. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at my oscilloscope and I'm looking at the onset of clipping which is about right now which is this 2.2 uh, volts. If I increase this voltage we can see on my oscilloscope that it starts to clip. So I'm going to go back down to this 2.2 uh, volts. I'm going to call that my maximum uh, input voltage and we will look at what our gain is and so our gain is roughly 10 db our maximum power is going to be this uh, voltage this uh, 7 volts square that so uh, 49 divide that by 8 6 watts let's make a couple of other quick measurements let's look at our signal to noise ratio. I'm going to measure the signal to noise ratio with a 1 volt output. Put the analyzer into our uh, signal to noise ratio and what this does is it makes a uh, measurement at the 1 volts and then it makes a measurement at 0 volt input and it does a comparison and right now it is uh, showing uh, roughly 97 dB um, and that's very good. I'm impressed. We'll go to THD right now at this uh, same voltage uh, setting and our THD is 0.15%. That is also a very good number. Let's look at the input impedance. Uh, 9.6 kilo ohms at and this is at one kilohertz. We'll do some frequency sweeps later on. 
Oh, this this is kind of fun for giggles. This is the uh, AC power uh, at my house right now. Roughly 120 volts and we're running 3.7% distortion. Well, we're basically 60 hertz. Let's look at our frequency response. I'm going to go back to amplitude and I'm going to go to a uh, reference, dB reference. So I'll go to dBr. Oh, it was previously set up. I'll, I would hit the zero and now we can go into a sweep and hit sweep. We can see up here the uh, uh, frequency that it's generating is uh, getting, the wavelength is getting uh, longer, frequency is decreasing, and we can see the uh, frequency plot running right now. We will let this run. Uh, I didn't probably need to do 150 steps. I could have done 75 steps. And so what will be interesting to see is what our low frequency cutoff is. Uh, since this is a single-ended design, the output on, of the amplifier is capacitively coupled. And so it's got these big monster caps to provide uh, a low cutoff. We can see this cutoff happening right now. I can move my cursor here and we can see that uh, this is very flat. My upper range is 6 dB and my lower range is negative 20 dB. I can look at our minus 6 dB point is uh, 16 Hertz. I think that's sufficient. This, this could be uh, 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 lowered if we had a higher value output capacitor. We're basically flat to uh, 18 kilohertz our roughly 6 dB down point is 22 kilohertz. We previously looked at our THD at a uh, static, uh, you know, a single frequency of one kilohertz. Let's do a quick sweep. Right now at one kilohertz, we're 0.15%. I'm going to go into my sweep mode and I have this adjusted for a maximum reading of one hertz and a minimum of 0.01 percent. Again you can see the scope up here. You can see that the the frequency is changing here and down here I'll change the exposure again. We can see the plot occurring. This looks nice and flat which is good. No anomalies on the THD changing uh, versus frequency. The next measurement I'm going to perform is uh, looking at how the amplifier responds to a one kilohertz square wave input. I've got my function generator up here and it is set at one kilohertz square wave signal. Uh, you can see the output here on my oscilloscope. I have a, you know, my standard eight ohm resistor and uh, the output is uh, using 50 ohm cable and 50 ohm uh, input impedance to the oscilloscope. I've zoomed in on my uh, scope screen and this looks very good. Uh, there's just a very slight right there uh, overshoot of maybe a quarter of a volt. Uh, this looks much better than the uh, clone uh, ACA amplifier that I looked at uh, several months ago. I can uh, plug in my linear power supply and I get just ever so slightly better signal to noise ratio. I'm going to unplug the meanwhile power supply right now and I will now plug in my uh, bench supply Give it a second for the power supply to stabilize. You can see that it's just a little bit better, a dB or two better. Uh, probably nothing uh, audible. We are looking at the line conducted emissions of the Meanwell 
uh, AC to DC 120 watt switcher. This is how much noise that the power supply kicks back down on the AC mains. There are limits that are specified by uh, the FCC and the European Union and this is a very critical measurement or a very critical specification to meet. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I've had some problems with Meanwell power supplies uh, uh, actually meeting this specification. Um, however, this uh, power supply looks uh, very good. Um, so what we're doing is we have the amplifier powered by the wall, uh, not wall wart, but the you know the desktop power supply, and it is fed by uh, this connection right here, and this is what's called a listen a line impedance stabilization network, and this provides a uniform uh, uh, source impedance to the power supply, and also provides a means to tap off and look at the noise, which comes out here and is routed to the spectrum analyzer. I have uh, placed a limit line here of uh, 46 dB microvolts, and uh, this is the uh, minimum uh, level that cannot be surpassed. Uh, maybe that's a good way of saying it, I'm not sure. But uh, so basically this line here cannot go above this uh, 46 dB microvolts. Now the uh, actual um, spec has a little line here and then it comes up here a little bit and then it goes up. It's not just a flat line, but this is worst case, the 46 dB. And as we can see, uh, our trace does not go above this line. And so we should be good. As you can see, there are, you know, there's a little bump right here and there's some noise here and this is uh, noise that is being created by this. And what we can do is I can turn off the power supply and we should see that uh, this signal uh, decreases, these bumps will decrease. Let's look at the thermal of the uh, amplifier. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is dissipating about 70 watts, which is a fair amount of uh, heat to get rid of. My uh, temperature in my lab here is about 20 degrees C. Uh, I'm in a, a basement and it's the winter, so that's uh, fairly cool. As we can see here, we're measuring about 57 C that's going to be on the uh, inside or you know in in the fins the edge of the fin is running uh, substantially cooler let's uh, look at uh, other portions of the amplifier and we can see that it is much cooler sorry about the shaking I don't have a good way of doing this we're looking at the inside of the amplifier this is the circuit board this little section right here is the uh, three watt resistors. There's four of those resistors, one and two, three and four. And then we can look down here and that is the uh, MOSFET transistors. And so we can see the hottest thing on this board are those resistors. I don't see any other components on here that are hot. Thermally, I think this is a good design and we, there shouldn't be any issues. I've got the ACA hooked up to uh, some speakers now and in my audio slash home theater, it's a pretty small little room. It is hooked up to my planar uh, speakers. These I uh, profiled in another video. Um, they are relatively efficient. They're about 8990 dB and uh, a primarily resistive load of uh, close to 8 ohms. So they are a 
easy load to drive. I downloaded some uh, apparently royalty free music off of that I can use on YouTube and what I'm doing is I'm playing the music on my laptop and it is coming through this cable to a little uh, Behringer DAC and then that is feeding a preamp right here and this preamp is a unit of my own design it is also a class a preamp uh, it is direct coupled the output is not um, ac coupled with a capacitor show that uh, it basically plays with enough volume it sounds good to me um, and uh, give me just a second first thing actually i want to demonstrate is that the amplifier is is dead quiet uh, you don't hear any hum I don't hear any hiss Let's wrap this up. Uh, the amplifier is good. It uh, has good performance, has good specifications, it's quiet, has plenty of power for uh, most of my listening, uh, reasonably uh, priced, and uh, took about uh, four hours to put together. I guess my only complaints, and maybe this are, you know, this is nitpicking a little bit. Would be the inclusion of that solid wire uh, I don't like that and then I think the uh, amplifier the the mechanical uh, is looks nice and is is pretty good but I think it could be a little easier to put together if the heat sinks would have been used more of a, a structural uh, aspect yeah all in all it's a, it's a good amplifier uh, and uh, I have said in previous uh, videos that uh, I uh, am a Nielsen Pass fan. Uh, I think he has uh, some uh, awesome products. Well, there we go. Thanks again.